today we are going to talk about action potentials right what are action potentials action potentials are rapidly developing membrane potential changes which rapidly travel over the membranes again what are action potentials action potentials are the electrochemical fluctuations in the membranes of excitable cells again resting action potentials are electrochemical changes occurring in cell membranes of excitable cells and which rapidly propagate right or you can say these are potential differences across the membrane which are in action which are moving on the membrane right so let me explain it and later on we'll go again back to its definition that how action potentials work this is a signaling mechanism right in the neurons and in the muscles let's suppose if someone touch me here right and if i feel that touch it means that if when someone touched here in some nerve endings action potential started and it went to my central nervous system again listen i'm going to give you an example that let's suppose someone touches me here and if i feel that touch it simply means that someone who was touching here he gave us st mechanical stimulus and that stimulus actually produced action potential in the neurons which and those action potential uh, were in action it means they were moving on the neurons membrane and they gave information to the central nervous system is that right let's see exactly how it happens let's suppose here i draw a spinal cord and let's suppose that here is a neuron this is a sensory neuron its cell body is present in the dorsal root ganglion and <laughs> sensory neurons have one peripheral process one peripheral process and the other process which is called central process so what is really happening that this is a sensory neuron which is supposed to take stimulus information from the peripheral part of the body to the central nervous system and now this part of the neurons i make it very large so that we can really understand that what's going on i have enlarged this part actually what i'm trying to show that this part of the neuron is in the finger is that right someone is touching here and we'll see how the touch will produce action potential and how the action potential will move in this membrane of the neuron cell and eventually go to the central nervous system is that right the theme of this lecture is that we have to see that how action potentials develop and how they act as signaling mechanisms right so for an example we have taken a neuron a sensory neuron right and this is its peripheral end and that is its central end and of course i have enlarged it out of proportion just to show you the electrochemical changes when a neuron is stimulated and when an action potential is produced right first of all we'll go back to resting membrane potential because resting membrane potential is altered and converted into action potential right in excitable cell excitable cells are the neurons and muscle cells. muscle cells only neurons and muscle cells or excitable cells can uh, undergo the process of action potential generation right now let's see first of all the basic like all other cells this neuronal cell is also having sodium potassium atpases right like all other cells and their membranes are having sodium potassium atpases are constantly throwing the sodium out very good and concentrating the potassium and right and what really happens that because the sodium potassium atpases are working in all neuronal membrane rather all human cells including this neuronal membrane so they are constantly pushing the three sodium out and bringing two potassium and in this way this neuron is on internal side very very rich in potassium and it is surrounded by the fluid which is very rich in sodium, sodium right then you know that 
when the cells are resting, or neurons, or muscle cells, or any other cell, when they are resting, when they are not excited, the membranes are permeable to potassium, but the membranes are not permeable to sodium. sodium significantly. So if this is a resting neuron, it is yet not stimulated. It is, up to now it is not stimulated, right? So this must have potassium channels. leaky channels, potassium ungated channels, or leaky channels, which leak on all the time and due to these potassium leaky channels whatever potassium keep on diffusing out when potassium is diffusing out it will develop diffusion potential for the potassium and it will keep on diffusing out until equilibrium potential is achieved for the yes, potassium yes. and in lectures of the resting membrane potential we have discussed that in most of the cells resting membrane potential may be somewhere between minus 90 to minus 70 millivolt. Let's suppose in this particular neurons enough potassium diffuses out and leaves behind enough anions that resting membrane potential is resting membrane potential is let's suppose minus 90 millivolt. You can take any value for understanding minus 70 or minus 90 again. Up to now, I have just discussed that this is a model of a neuron, right? And we have just discussed that like all other cells, the neurons also have sodium potassium ATPases. They are pumping the sodium out and accumulating potassium in. And in the resting conditions, neuronal membranes are very permeable to potassium, but not significantly permeable to sodium. Due to that reason, potassium keep on diffusing out, right? And this diffusion potential of potassium reaches near the equilibrium potential for potassium and that is actually the resting membrane potential for this neuron. Now this neuron is resting. Up to now no one has stimulated it or touched it. It, is, it can be mechanically stimulated, right? Now we see how a little touch, a little stimulation can trigger action potential. potential. That is what we have to learn. Uh, just for the graph explanation, let's suppose that this is potassium equilibrium potential equilibrium potential for potassium that is about okay let's suppose this is minus 85 right what is this potassium equilibrium potential right and normally in these neurons even the potassiums are coming out there is very little sodium influx which is almost insignificant but that Pa slightly neutralizes this minus 85 so resting membrane potential may be at this is potassium equilibrium potential I will make it green so that you really remember it clearly potassium equilibrium potential right then resting membrane potential is usually a little less negative than potassium equilibrium potential because ideally enough potassium should go out so that membrane really re approaches equilibrium potential for potassium. But membrane may not be 100% fully permeable to potassium. So because it is not 100% fully permeable to potassium, right? So potassium may not go as much out as much is required, as much diffusion out is required to achieve the potassium equilibrium potential. So resting or maybe some cations are little bit trickling in. So it is less negative. Minus 85 is the potassium equilibrium potential, but let's suppose it is less negative, it is about minus 70. Let's suppose it is minus 70 millivolt, and what is this resting membrane potential? So, what we have learned this is a neuron which is yet not stimulated, and its resting membrane potential is very, very near to potassium equilibrium potential. Is it clear to everyone? Now we move to the next thing. Let's suppose this neuron can be stimulated. How it can be stimulated? It is sensitive to touch. It means when you touch it, there is some change in the electrical potential. How? Actually, this, if this neuron is sensitive to touch, then this must be having touch sensitive sodium channels. What are these? Mechanically operated sodium channels. What are these? These are mechanically operated sodium channels, right? They are touch sensitive sodium channels. When this neuron is not touched, sodium is not going in. But if you touch them, you really distort the membrane a little. With mechanical stimulus, with little touch, 
you produce a distortion in neuronal membrane and when you produce a little distortion with touch what will happen that little bit sodium will trickle in and when this sodium will trickle in it will produce it will produce yes please it will not produce full de depolarization this is the first concept in action potential this little bit sodium which is coming in right it is not responsible for full depolarization now you have to listen very very carefully it is very initial inward current when cations move inside the neuron we say there is inward current and when cations move out we say there is outward current but little bit sodium is coming in again these are not voltage gated sodium channels these are not voltage gated sodium channels these are mechanical stimulus sensitive or touch sensitive sodium channels and when you touch the neuron there's a little distortion and that distortion in the membrane slightly open these sodium channels and little bit sodium come in right little bit inward current start now what happens let's suppose touch was applied here is that right stimulus was applied here and let's suppose stimulus was very little very little then a very small amount of sodium comes in when a little amount of sodium come in naturally sodium will make the membrane potential slightly what less negative it will make it less negative so what will happen that membrane potential which was minus 70 when little sodium will come in it will become less negative is that right I have to tell something here because you confused it with the suppose this is minus 60 millivolt and th at minus 60 millivolt there is threshold potential actually there are very special voltage gated sodium channels what are these voltage gated sodium channels which are having uh, you can say activation gate which are closed right now and inactivation gate which are open this is which channel voltage gated sodium channel please don't confuse this voltage gated sodium channel with these cationic channels which are touch sensitive is that right now what really happens at threshold potential these voltage gated sodium channels open so when you touch it if you touch very slight very very slight touch very little sodium goes in extracellular sodium will go in right resting membrane potential slightly fluctuate towards where threshold but let's suppose that it does not reach its threshold it was so so small and so slight touch so little touch so little stimulus energy the little sodium which come in made the resting membrane potential less negative but for example from minus 70 it got minus 65 but it could not reach to minus 60 so it means it did not touch the threshold and it means voltage gated sodium channels did not open now when little sodium comes in membrane potential will fluctuate from resting towards the threshold but because enough sodium did not come in this potential difference will die out why this will die the reason being little sodium came in right in place of that little more potassium went in you get it sodium is inward current and normally potassium is leaking out right for example if 10 sodium came in and 10 additional potassium went out membrane will go back to its resting membrane potential so what really happened you applied a very little stimulus we applied a very little stimulus which was less than threshold so we call this stimulus sub threshold stimulus what is the stimulus sub -threshold. sub threshold stimulus when you apply sub threshold stimulus then what really happens the very little cations which come in cations may be sodium or calcium here we are taking example of sodium a little inward current of sodium which comes in produce a slight fluctuation of resting membrane potential towards the threshold potential but it does not reach its threshold. threshold potential and right and as soon as little sodium has come in additional potassium goes out and when potassium goes out what will happen yes what will happen that as potassium will go out right membrane potential during 
this activity, right, it was moving from resting towards threshold, but before it could reach to threshold, potassium leaked out and it came back. It means what happened? That, do you think this potential fluctuation, a small potential fluctuation which was produced in this part of the membrane, will it travel? No. It was just a local fluctuation. It was just a local fluctuation in the potential of the membrane. Am I clear? You are not clear about it. Look, someone touches so lightly that very little sodium comes in. Right, for example, just there are 100 sodium ions come in. 100 sodium ion which came in made the resting membrane potential or membrane potential less negative. From, for example, they made it from minus 70 to minus 68. But they could not drag their membrane potential up to threshold. So a little membrane become a little less negative, but the same number of potassium ions went out in addition to normal potassium efflux. Normally potassium is diffusing out. But due to the sodium influx, due to this additional sodium coming in, some additional potassium goes out. So it means that little sodium came in, took the resting membrane potential a little less negative, but same amount of potassium went out and brought it back to the same negative situation. So this, there was a little membrane potential fluctuation, which was immediately, what happened, corrected. And resting membrane potential little fluctuated and then came back to the resting position. Am I clear? No problem after this. So it was a little potential difference in the membrane produced by a th sub threshold stimulus. It was a little potential difference in the membrane produced by sub threshold stimulus, right, which could not move on the membrane, which could not produce an action. So it is not action potential, it is a local potential without any action. Is that right? Now, next time, other person touch a little more. This time, if, if strength of is, stimulus is slightly increased, then sodium influx will be slightly higher. higher. Maybe more sodium come in. But still it could not reach to threshold. threshold. Then again, potassium efflux brings the membrane back. So do you think it went to that point? So stimulus is still considered sub-threshold. Sub it is below the threshold potential. Now someone touch it a little more. And this time, because strength of stimulus was slightly more than first and second case, and third attempt, strength of stimulus was slightly more than first and second attempt. So membrane distortion in the neuron was more, so sodium influx was higher, and let's suppose this time, sodium which was coming in, it reaches to threshold. Here the real action will start. What will happen? That voltage sensitive, millions and millions of voltage sensitive sodium channels will suddenly open. Now this you have to understand very, very clearly. Sodium channels have, I will show you normally, sodium channel is like this, and it is having one activation gate and other inactivation gate. Normally activation gate, when cell membrane is at resting membrane potential, activation gate is closed, and inactivation gate is open. Is that right? Now, listen carefully. Actually, why we need to bring the resting membrane potential up to threshold. Why we have to pull this up to there? Because at resting membrane potential, this is the situation. At resting membrane potential, sodium channel is resting, resting channel in this configuration. If you bring the voltage of the membrane from minus 70 at minus 60 rapidly, if you take the resting membrane potential rapidly to the Threshold potential, threshold potential is suppose in this neuron minus minus 60 millivolt. If you take the resting membrane potential up to threshold potential, right, then threshold sensor, threshold voltage sensitive sodium channels will open explosively. And these sodium channels open very widely and they bring massive amount of sodium in. 
is that right so what really happens that as soon as it comes to threshold sodium channels go into this configuration that its inactivation gate was already open and at minus 60 millivolt this other gate what was that activation gate activation gate that also opens is that right so we can say that activation gate is sensitive to threshold voltage the so threshold voltage suddenly activation gate flips open and as soon as activation gate flips open i will show you here this was voltage sensitive voltage gated voltage sensitive sodium channel here it is in resting state and here i will show that resting magnetic potential has been fluctuated enough to approach up to threshold and at threshold voltage sensitive activation gate open and these are inactivation gate now listen when millions and millions of voltage sensitive sodium channels open their activation gate is it right membrane becomes suddenly very permeable to sodium so that patch of the membrane that piece of the membrane in the neuron where you were giving the stimulus that piece of the membrane that part of the membrane that local area of the membrane becomes suddenly very 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 permeable to sodium and now when membrane is permeable to sodium now it is the turn for the sodium to drag the membrane potential towards its own equilibrium potential so now because sodium is in high concentration outside so as soon as voltage gated sodium channels open lot of sodium comes inside in and this massive amount of the sodium which is coming in right it rapidly now originally when membrane was resting it was inside of the membrane was polarized to the negative side is that right now when voltage sensitive sodium channels open lot of sodium come then a lot of sodium come then uh, electro then inner electronegativity of the membrane is rapidly neutralized for example when more and more sodium is coming in it become minus 50 minus 40 minus 20 minus 10 0 so it means that as more and more sodium is coming in right membrane potential will from threshold will rapidly rush to where it will rapidly move towards sodium, sodium equilibrium potential let's suppose that it is zero sodium equilibrium potential is minus 65 millivolt this is sodium equilibrium potential and this is zero point so lot of sodium will come in and this part of the membrane which is appropriately stimulated is <coughs> extremely permeable to sodium and now this piece of the membrane is approaching to equilibrium potential for the sodium so rapidly sodium is coming in membrane is becoming less and less negative right so it means membrane is losing its negative polarity what is happening membrane is losing its normal negative polarity or we say simply the membrane is depolarized or we say membrane is depolarized it has lost its negative polarity yes what's your question just a minute yeah it is plus 65 yes okay. right so minus 60 minus 50 for example minus 40 minus 30 minus 20 minus 10 right and for example it become 0 plus 10 now listen carefully as soon as when a proper st appropriate stimulus was appropriate strength of, strength of stimulus was provided then enough sodium came in to take the resting membrane potential up to threshold, threshold and at threshold potential voltage sensitive sodium channels opened their activation gate in a very fast way and membrane suddenly that patch of the membrane become suddenly very very permeable to so sodium a lot of sodium comes in so that it bring the membrane potential towards its own equilibrium potential as more and more sodium rapidly comes in membrane become less and less negative until it becomes depolarized but before membrane could really reach up to sodium equilibrium potential that is plus 65 inactivation gate closes what really happens 
that even though activation gate is open but inactivation gate closes and because inactivation gate closes rapidly so more sodium influx will abruptly stop suddenly stop so membrane may not achieve the equilibrium potential of sodium so we say it was a very rapid drastic and sudden attempt of the sodium in uh, ingoing sodium to take the resting membrane potential or threshold potential towards its own equilibrium potential it may completely depolarize the membrane i mean and even take the membrane potential slightly towards the positive side is that right now at this moment we can say at this particular moment what has happened what is the special event that sodium channels which had open from this point up to this point sodium activation channels were sodium activation gates were from here up to here sodium activation gates were opening and at this point inactivation gates are closed now more sodium cannot come and is that right it means listen again sodium channels here were at this point they were in resting stage here they were activated and here they are inactivated is that right again at this stage sodium channels were now you will tell me its activation gates are closed and inactivation gates are open right and they can now when one start opening other start closing but opening activation gate opens little faster than inactivation gate closes so after the it is in resting membrane potential as soon as resting membrane potential move to threshold sodium channels voltage sensitive sodium channels undergo conformational change and their activation gate suddenly open and inactivation gate start closing for that a very small duration when activation gates are opening and or opened but inactivation gate is yet not closed lot of sodium comes in and this depolarizes the membrane right just in a millisecond what really happens when activation be gates become fully open is that right then suddenly inactivation gates are this gate is closed so what does it mean that now sodium channels are inactivated but there is one thing very important every student should know when sodium channels are inactivated they cannot be stimulated and opened again immediately they have to flip back to resting configuration this is resting configuration of the channel this is active con configuration of the channel this is inactive configuration of the channel you have to remember it that for the channels to be re excitable for the channels to be re excitable they will take some time and after little time sodium channels will what they will do voltage gated sodium channel which have performed the function of activation and depolarization after that they were trapped into which stage inactivation stage and after when membrane will repolarize later on we'll see what will happen that activation gate will close and inactivation will open so it means now they have gone back to which state resting, resting state and it means they are now again excitable is that right claro now come back <laughs> listen what we have done up to now that first of all we did sub threshold stimulus very small stimulus very little sodium came in, came in but whatever little sodium came in same, same amount of potassium went out so resting membrane potential could not reach up to threshold. threshold and this local fluctuation the potential died out is that right this was local potential which died out then what happened we did a little more stimulus this time local potential was stronger right but still it could not reach to threshold, threshold. and it due to potassium efflux it also died out third time we give at least the strength of stimulus was so much that so much sodium came rapidly in is that right there was so much inward current of the sodium due to stimulus that resting membrane potential really reached to threshold when membrane potential became a reach up to threshold voltage then voltage sensitive sodium channels 
opened their activation gates explosively and massive amount of sodium rapidly came to from outside to inside of the membrane and tried to take the make the membrane as more and more sodium is coming in mo, uh, what is happening membrane is moving rapidly towards sodium, sodium, sodium equilibrium potential from potassium equilibrium potential membrane is rushing to sodium, sodium equilibrium potential is that right so and during this process membrane become progressively less and less negative and even it may become completely depolarized and little overshoot may occur overshoot mean the membrane potential above the zero point this was zero point a little overshoot may occur right but by the time right membrane is completely depolarized but yet not not so much sodium has come that it could take it to threshold before membrane potential could reach to the sorry before the sodium before the sodium in flux could take the membrane potential up to the sodium equilibrium potential before that inactivation gate closes so this was just a very humble attempt of the sodium but it failed to reach up to equilibrium before that it shut off when these channels inactivation channels or uh, gates close down when it inactivation gates close down uh, sodium channels voltage gated sodium channels are trapped into which phase inactivation phase almost at the same time voltage sensitive potassium channels open which channels open voltage sensitive potassium channels open and they open their gate actually listen now carefully when membrane was getting depolarized potassium channels are also sensitive to depolarizing current but they open with a little delay so when potassium channels become activated suddenly that part of the membrane which was extremely permeable to sodium suddenly it become impermeable to sodium and permeable to potassium. potassium and potassium is more inside so suddenly potassium start going out so now current is outward so rapidly potassium start leaking out when potassium start leaking out as positive charges are being lost outside inner side of the membrane become as more and more potassium is going out inner side of the membrane become more and more electro negative, negative. so now membrane start getting more and more electro negative. negative it means it is going back to its negative polarity so it is repolarizing itself what membrane is doing it is repolarizing itself so when membrane is repolarizing this is this repolarization is occurring due to potassium efflux loss of potassium out so potassium channels remain open and it keep on repolarizing now membrane will keep on losing potassium in an attempt to reach to the equilibrium potential of potassium. potassium and for this short duration and for a while membrane remain more permeable to potassium than sodium. than sodium and more permeable to potassium than potassium permeability at resting phase so excessive amount of potassium go out and even membrane loses excessive amount of potassium that membrane goes more negative than resting membrane potential to achieve it very much near to its resting membrane potential is that right then what happens that eventually voltage gated potassium channel close and membrane is only uh, permeable to diffuse uh, leaky potassium channels so membrane come back to its resting situation is that clear again let me explain it what really happened attention please up to now you have really not learned that how the signals move i did not tell you how the signals move i'm just telling how the attention attention don't write anything just listen how a energy of a stimulus is converted into electrochemical fluctuation in a membrane which is capable to move i will tell you later how it moves first you listen again we applied the stimulus to this part of the membrane let's suppose this is part one of the membrane neural membrane this is part patch one this is patch number two let's suppose this is patch number three patch number four patch number five we'll see how this move over but first you we review a little what really happens no one touch me i'm very sad <laughs> no stimulation coming anyway then someone touch very little very little touch 
a touch which I'm not going to feel. Why I don't feel that touch? Because so little sodium comes in, right? Actually, by stimulus, you try to produce a local potential, local depolarizing potential. What you are trying to produce? Local depolarizing potential. Initial depolarization. This is initial depolarization. Or we can say, by little stimulus, you are making the membrane potential less negative. So we say, you are trying to produce little hypopolarization. Because if membrane move upward, that is hypopolarization. If membrane potential move downward, it is hyperpolarization. Whenever membrane becomes slightly less negative, it is hypopolarized. And when it is becoming more negative, it is hyperpolarized. Again, this is very important area to work on. When you produce a little stimulus, you produce a little inward current. This inward current will make the membrane from resting position to slightly less negative. So when it makes it slightly less negative, we say membrane is slightly depolarized. Or we say membrane is slight, there's initial depolarization produced. It's not the real depolarization. Or we can say there's slight hypopolarization produced. Membrane is slightly hypopolarized, but incoming sodium is, right, is cancelled by outgoing potassium. potassium. So little fluctuation, the membrane goes back. Then someone touch a little more, then still more sodium comes in, yet it does not reach to threshold. threshold. A little stimulus does not bring enough sodium in to take the membrane, local membrane potential up to threshold. So again, this will die out. Third time, someone is good enough to, to touch such decently with enough stimulus strength and to produce enough distortion in the nerve ending membrane that enough sodium goes in through which channels? Enough sodium goes in through not sodium channels. Enough sodium goes in through through mechanically mechanical sensitive sodium channels, right? Mechanical stimulus sensitive. And this time, when someone has been decent enough to touch at least with threshold stimulus, right? Enough sodium goes in, and when enough sodium goes in, resting membrane potential fluctuate due to this inward current up to threshold potential. As soon as this neuron, this piece of the membrane achieve, achieves threshold, threshold potential, millions of voltage gated sodium channel open their activation right. gate. And a lot of sodium comes in and resting membrane potential, uh, threshold potential rapidly appro approaches to, it is moving towards now membrane potential from the threshold potential is due to influx of heavy influx of sodium membrane potential from the threshold potential is rapidly moving towards the equilibrium potential of sodium during this process membrane become less and less negative and eventually negative polarity of the membrane is completely lost negative polarity of the membrane is completely lost and membrane becomes depolarized and it may even produce a little overshoot but at this point, two things occur. Number one, that voltage-gated sodium channels, inactivation channels are closed. Mm -hmm. Number two, voltage-sensitive potassium channels okay. open. So when voltage-gated sodium channels close, inward current stop. And when voltage-gated potassium channels open, then outward current start. So sudden abrupt stoppage of Sodium. sodium influx and onset of potassium efflux and rapid potassium efflux because these are not leaky channels these are voltage gated potassium. potassium channels these are different than simple leaky channels so when they open up potassium rapidly goes out because it wants to bring the membrane potential back to the potassium equilibrium potential as more and more potassium is going out membrane gets more and more electro negative as membrane is getting more and more negative it means it is going back to its negative polarity so it may become repolarized and once it has reached to the level of repolarization back to its resting membrane potential when it reaches to back to the what is this resting membrane potential so potassium channels still remain open ex unduly excessively for a short time so potassium keep on moving excessively and even membrane potential become less, uh, far less negative, uh, become more negative than resting membrane potential. Is that right? It means, look, when membrane potential was moving from here up to here, we say local depolarizing current was produced. What was produced? Local depolarizing current was produced. 
as soon as it reaches to threshold, then full depolarization is produced. Is that right? When due to opening of sodium channel. Here inactivation of sodium channel occur and activation of potassium channel. That starts the repolarization. As more and more potassium goes out, membrane keep on repolarizing and it reaches up to resting membrane potential. But because voltage gated potassium channel remain open for longer time, ideally they should close here, but everything is not ideal, including the potassium channels. So they remain open, they are sluggish to close. Once they open their mouth, slow to close. So what happens, they take longer time and excessive amount of potassium goes out and membrane even become more electronegative than resting membrane situation. We say membrane has become hyperpolarized. What is this? Membrane is hyperpolarized. Is that right? Am I clear? Now. It is not uh, the real action I have not explained yet. What happens? Up to now we have seen only one thing. It's worth repeating again, but in a very brief. Up to now, we have learned only one thing. Now, let's review it fastly, and then we'll continue further. First of all, what, what did I say? That action potentials are rapidly fluctuating membrane potentials, which travel over the excitable cell membranes and act as signaling mechanisms in our body. Is that right? One of the classical example I took, when someone touch, touches you, then action potentials are produced, first local potentials and then action potentials are produced in the neurons which take information to your central nervous system. Here we were seeing that how a stimulus can produce local depolarizing current and how, once that reaches the threshold, how an action potential is generated and how it travels over this neuron. This neuron, in this example I have shown, it is not having the myelination and Schwann cells. In later lecture, I will explain that once the neurons are myelinated, then how the action potential jumps or depolarization jumps from node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier. That we'll discuss later. First of all, let's review there that we were talking about this is potassium equilibrium potential. Right? What is this? Potassium equilibrium potential. Here it is resting membrane potential uh, and here it is sodium equilibrium potential and what we were doing again on a resting neuron now you will tell me what are these sodium potassium pumps which are normally pumping sodium out and accumulating potassium and is that right and secondly normally in a resting cell membrane is permeable to potassium. So due to diffusion of potassium outward, right, there is uh, membrane potential in a resting cell due to diffusion of potential outward, diffusion of potassium outward, resting membrane potential is near to potassium equilibrium potential. Let's suppose resting membrane potential in this neuron in this area is minus, minus uh, 70 millivolt, minus 70 millivolt. Is that right? Then what really happens, someone is providing a stimulus here and there are some stimulus sensitive cationic channel. Let's suppose there are sodium channels, these are not voltage gated sodium channels, these are touch sensitive sodium channels. When someone touches, if the stimulus is less than threshold, then of course I did not make threshold potential here, these are threshold potential. Now if stimulus is less than threshold, then resting membrane potential fluctuate becomes slightly less negative, but due to efflux of potassium, due to efflux of potassium, right, whatever sodium comes in, if same amount of potassium is eventually goes out, resting membrane potential is re-established, right. If a stimulus is further enhanced, then a stronger local depolarizing current is produced, but that will also eventually die out. But if stimulus is strong enough to produce so much sodium in flux that resting membrane potential fluctuate all the way up to threshold. threshold. Then threshold voltage sensitive, which channels open? Sodium. Voltage gated, sodium channels open and a lot of sodium comes in and membrane undergoes the process of, yes please, depolarization. It is zero and with little overshoot. As soon as membrane depolarizes due to heavy sodium influx, before the membrane potential reaches 
सोडियम इक्विलिब्रियम पोटेंशियल सोडियम चैनल इन एक्टिवेशन गेट्स आर क्लोज एंड वोल्टेज सेंसिटिव पोटेशियम चैनल आर ओपन सो इनवर्ड सोडियम करंट स्टॉप बट आउटवर्ड पोटेशियम करंट स्टार्ट राइट एंड एज मोर एंड मोर पोटेशियम गोज आउट मेम्ब्रेन पोटेंशियल गोज बैक टू इट्स नेगेटिव पोलैरिटी राइट इट मे गो टू रेस्टिंग वैल्यू एंड इवन मोर नेगेटिव इफ दे रिमेन ओपन फॉर लॉन्गर टाइम एंड मे प्रोड्यूस हाइपर पोलराइजेशन राइट नाउ अगेन नॉर्मली इट वॉज माइनस सेवेंटी सो दीज वॉज स्टिमुलस सेंसिटिव इनकमिंग सोडियम करंट विच टूक द रेस्टिंग वैल्यू पोटेंशियल अप टू येस अप टू थ्रेश होल्ड दैट वॉज लेट एस पोज माइनस सिक्सटी माइनस सिक्सटी एंड एट दैट टाइम वोल्टेज गैजेट सोडियम चैनल ओपन and so much sodium came in that it became depolarized minus well, plus 10 is that right and then potassium went out and it became minus 70 or even minus 80 is that right is that clear the point which we had to understand when one piece of a membrane part of a membrane undergoes depolarizes right the incoming sodium goes to floats to the neighboring area and Take the resting membrane potential of neighboring area to threshold, threshold and voltage get its sodium channel open in that area. Lot of sodium come in, so th this area, second part of the membrane becomes depolarized. And as soon as it becomes depolarized, this area itself started repolarization. But meanwhile, when it was depolarizing, when it was depolarizing, some sodium went to the next area and triggered the depolarization there. so what really happens that this was stimulus applied to one part of a membrane where resting membrane potential was brought up to threshold and once a part of a membrane is depolarized then whole membrane will undergo depolarization process because one part of depolarization one part of the membrane which depolarizes it it triggers the depolarization in neighboring area and whatever neighboring area is depolarized that that triggers the depolarization in next area so and so forth so wave of depolarization travels in all the directions in the membrane until the whole membrane of that excitable cell is depolarized but the point where the ripple of depolarization was produced that point itself undergoes repolarization then as wave of depolarization is progressing over the membrane of excitable cell uh, that wave of depolarization is followed by a wave of repolarization so what we really see that if we have an excitable cell here and i stimulate in the middle what you will find wave of deposition is like a ripple going out and wherever the wave of deposition is going out wave of repolarization, repolarization is following so wave of deposition is spreading out as sodium in flux wave and wave of repolarization is following that as potassium efflux wave am i clear why it was so important to learn these phenomenon number 1 that you should have a very clear concept the difference between local potentials local potentials and versus action potentials what are action potentials action potential the wave of depolarization followed by repolarization or action potentials are rapidly developing electrochemical fluctuations in membranes of excitable cells which propagate which are in action now listen carefully what is the real difference in local potential and action potential number 1 local potential here look local potential can be depolarizing or it can be hyperpolarizing that i will discuss later right now we are talking about local fluctuation which is depolarizing local potential number 1 is yes what is the special thing number 1 it's a very small fluctuation what is it it's a small fluctuation and local potential does not travel so it is non propagating what is it non propagating and when you compare it with action potential it is propagating auto propagating propagating and it shows the phenomenon of all or none right secondly number one it is non propagating local potential action potential propagates local potential is local fluctuation action potential is potential difference which is in action number two it is graded graded mean what depending upon the grade of strength of stimulus it may be small it may be slightly larger it may be very large 
local potential for example in first stimulus it was very small then it was with moderate strength and then it was appropriate threshold strength so it is graded action potentials are not graded once they are produced they will be always same strength again listen what is meant by this local potential is graded means that it may fluctuate the resting membrane potential which is suppose minus 80 okay in our example it was minus 70 from minus 70 local potential may take it up to minus 65. maybe minus 65 or may take it up to minus 68 or may take it up to minus 70 and then threshold will occur then local will convert into threshold and at threshold depolarization will start so what happens the local potentials are the local fluctuations in membrane potential which are not reaching up to threshold so they don't propagate they remain localized and eventually die am i clear is that right so they are graded they can be small they can be large they can be larger is that right until they reach threshold, threshold. but when you compare with action potential you cannot say that with less stimulus there is small action potential and with stronger stimulus there is large action potential you cannot say why listen carefully when stimulus reach up to bring enough sodium that it reaches to threshold then all the sodium channels will open all the sodium channels will open now listen if someone touch with sub threshold sub threshold stimulus i will not feel the touch if someone touch with threshold i will feel the touch someone touch a little more pressure it is when there is a little more pressure don't tell anyone that action potential are becoming larger or bigger no then frequency of action potential is increased amplitude of action potential remain the same, same. Am I clear? Right? So action potential in a given excitable cell is always of same configuration. It starts from the same resting membrane potential. In a given excitable cell, action potential will start from the same threshold, go to the same depolarizing level and come back to the same repolarizing level with the same time factors. It means because action potential depends on the what is the voltage at which sodium channels will open it depends on sodium uh, voltage sensitive channel the more or less what is the concentration of sodium voltage sensitive sodium channel in a cell it depends on what is the concentration and activity of voltage gated potassium you cannot say that if stimulus is less then less voltage gated sodium channels are open and stimulus is more you cannot say the more voltage gated sodium channels are open when whenever stimulus reaches threshold all sodium channels will open is that right? Due to this reason, action potential in a given cell will be always identical. For example, if this is a neuron, right? Okay. Uh, and if I stimulate electrically this neuron 10 times, every time, if my stimulus is up to threshold or above threshold, action potential will be produced with the same characteristics. Size of action potential, time of action potential, shape of action potential, all the characteristics of action potential will be the same but if i have a different cell let's suppose this is a myocardial cell it is also stimulated so that its resting membrane potential goes to threshold but its action potential may be different than neuron myocardial cell action potential may be different than neuron its configuration may be different because its channels may be different but whenever you produce action potential in neuron right that will be absolutely identical and when you produce 10 different action potential at different time in the this my myocardial cell all of them will be identical it means action potential in a given excitable cell is always stereotypical action potential produced in a given what given excitable cell will be always stereotypical what does it mean that every time they are typical you cannot say that uh, now I'm getting larger action potential in a neuron and after one hour I'm getting smaller action potential in the same neuron In the same excitable cell whenever action potentials are produced they will be same in their characteristics so we say as uh, action potential are stereotypical it means they are not graded or are they graded they are not graded when local potential can be graded 
but action potentials are not graded they are stereo typical then another thing local potential can be added to each other if you give repeated stimulus in a very short time for example first stimulus brought little bit sodium before first stimulate could die let me tell you let's suppose this is the resting membrane potential and here it is threshold potential if you repeatedly stimulate in very short time an interval is so short that local potential was coming back but you gave another stimulus and it was dying out but before it dies you give another stimulus so what is happening and eventually it rose to threshold so what we are they are showing the phenomenon of summation they are added to each other they are adding to the sum of each other you are understanding that so local potential show the phenomenon of summation that if local potential are produced very in a very rapid succession right they can add to each other until the strength become enough to produce action potential but once action potential is generated you cannot say that with further stimulation you can make this action potential larger or smaller or anything am i clear so local potentials are localized non propagating action potentials are propagating uh, local potentials are uh, graded action potentials are stereotypical they are not graded in a given cell local potentials show the phenomenon of summation action potentials do not show the phenomenon of summation St normally stimuli generate local potential and if local potential take the resume potential up to threshold if local potentials are depolarizing initial potentials and if they take the resting minimum potential up to threshold only then action potential will be stimulated or generated any question up to this there is no question right so then we come to another thing that all or none principle i would like to repeat it again all or none principle means you cannot say that if stimulus is less then smaller action potential is produced this is a wrong statement or a stimulus is large larger action potential is produced no when you are increasing the stimulus once the stimulus is threshold or above threshold action potential will be the same so if you give sub threshold stimulus no action potential no action potential in any part of the membrane and if you give the stimulus which is up to threshold full action potential will be produced all of the membrane will undergo action potential right so action potential shows the phenomenon of all or none either there is no action potential by the stimulus or there is all membrane undergoing depolarization is that right full action potential is produced you cannot say that uh, with this stimulus i will get half action potential and with another stimulus i will get 70% action potential this is not true all action potential mean either you get the full action potential or you get no action potential is that right no confusion you got it i'm surprised right so now after this i want to come to the concept of refractory period refractory period before i really go for refractory period i will tell you that uh, my experience with some people I, I had three servants they were having also refractory period i was having three servant and they were also having refractory period what is that refractory period i asked them do specific work if they are fresh and they have taken enough rest all of them rush to do the work they do that part of the work and then they sit down they sit down i'm asking them to do more they refuse they have to complete their rest <laughs> when they properly rested right then they will if i ask then they will do again some action so i used to think that these my these employees uh, they are having some refractory period that once they perform their action after that they are inactivated for some time until they come out of that inactivation phase they remain refractory to the next stimulus is that right next order they are refractory to the next order until they are flipped back from inactive state to re excitable state when they have rested well and then if you request them to do some work they will do let's suppose we talk about those timeline and their activity i ask them to work here they will start their work they start their action and here they will stop now for example i have asked them to to do some work and when they are doing that work i give another order they will not do extra work they will not do 
extra work. Once they have taken an order, they are obeying that order. Whatever I do, I yell, I cry, I commit suicide. They are not going to, <laughs> yeah, they are not going to listen to me. <coughs> right? Then there is some time for which they are ready to listen and then they become ready again for action. For this duration, for example, for this duration from here up to here, whatever I do, they are absolutely deaf to my order. Right? They are not willing to listen. Then for some time, for some more duration, if I ask them some work politely, they will refuse. But if I yell at them, they will start action. So I used to say that time duration for which they are not going to take the next order from me, whatever I do, I say they are absolutely refractory, absolutely deaf to my orders. Is that right? But after that, for short time, a time is that if I give normal order, normal strength, if I don't yell, politely ask them to do, they don't work. But if I yell at them, they start some action. So it means here they are relatively refractory, or relatively resistant. Here there are absolute refractory mean absolute resistance to the next order, to the next stimulus. Relative refractory mean relatively resistance to the next stimulation and order. I don't know, I think my employees took some uh, lessons from action potential mechanisms. Action potential also has uh, some phenomenon like refractory period, right? And let me tell you why there is a refractory period. Let me draw one action potential here and then let me explain that what is really meant by the refractory period. For any action potential, again listen. What is this? This is resting membrane potential. And uh, what is this? Potassium equilibrium potential. And yes, please, what is it? Threshold potential. And what is here? Sodium equilibrium potential. It's easy, isn't it? A resting membrane potential, if you give appropriate stimulus, your duty is to take resting membrane potential up to threshold. threshold. And then heavy sodium influx will occur and membrane will undergo phenomenon of devalorization. And at the peak, sodium channels will inactivate and potassium channels will start working and then repolarization will start. Is that right? Clear now. What really happens that here, all the sodium channels were in which state at this time? They were in? They were in resting stage. This is like my employee which is resting, right? So it is having what? Activation, inactivation gate open and activation gate closed. closed. During this phase, what is happening? Okay, this was the sodium channel at this stage with its... Uh, am I clear? Now, what is the happening to the sodium channel at this stage? Activation gate is open and inactivation is yet not closed. And what is happening to sodium channels at this phase? Activation is even though open but inactivation is closed. Is that right? So we can say sodium channel was trapped in initially in resting phase at threshold stimulus it went into active state and then it it was trapped in inactive state. Is that right? Now, sodium channels take time to come back to the resting re-excitable state. Let's suppose that over the time when membrane potential become near the resting situation, here sodium channels are back to their what? Uh, I'll make here successively sodium channel sodium channel sodium channel yes you will tell me now before stimulation activation gate was closed inactivation gate was open when it is appropriately stimulated during depolarizing current activation gate is open as well as inactivation gate is open and heavy sodium influx and depolarization continuing once depolarization is completed here right and repolarization is going on at that very time even though potassium channels are open, but what happens to sodium channels? They are having inactivation gate 
closed and activation gate open with a little more time then what will happen here they were in inactivation activation gate was fully open but inactivation gate was closed is that right eventually they go back to their situation what happened this flips back and this open up and now they are ready to take the next order is that right so resting channel active channel inactive channels and again resting, resting excitable channel now listen carefully whenever you activate the sodium channel right even the activation gate open inactivation close when channel is in this configuration we say it is trapped into inactive state they take some time to, be, to remain stuck into inactive state until membrane is coming back to repolarization when membrane come back to repolarization only then they flip back to re-excitable state am I clear now listen we gave stimulus here in the time scale we gave the stimulus here we got action potential I give another stimulus here can I produce another action potential here no there's no way if I stimulate here can I produce another action potential no because now in that part of the membrane where I'm giving the stimulus most of the sodium channels are in trapped into inactive state they are trapped into inactive state because they are stuck into inactive state whatever stimulus in the world you bring membrane can rupture but they are not going to open you understand it they are so nasty <laughs> and this is very important to understand that once they have done their performance they are refractory for re-stimulation whatever you do in the world they are not going to be activated they will take their time and they will sense the voltage we say the recovery of these channel from inactive state back to resting state is time dependent as well as voltage dependent enough time should pass and voltage should come back to resting only then they decide to be ready to be reactivated am I clear so it means to make the membrane re-excitable we have to get most of the sodium channels from inactive state back to the resting state from inactive state to get them back to the active uh, resting state we have to wait for time wise as well as voltage wise membrane should get repolarized so we say during this time for example this time start from here when these channels open and channels recover okay from here first they activated for a short time and after that now what is this time inactive state during this time whatever you do in the world most of the sodium channels are stuck into inactive state so they were absolutely resistant to the next stimulus so we say this time duration is what absolute. from here up to here this is absolute refractory period absolute refractory period my, one of my friend has a wife also like that when they fight with each other I don't think of other things usually when he fight with his wife you know he was having a very small heart when his wife become angry he want to make her happy but she whatever he does she is not going to be happy even I told him that try gold every wife in the world can be made happy by the gold so I said he said my wife is very very angry and she never listens to him back before 48 hours <laughs> so her absolute her absolute refractive period was 48, 48 hours. hours and one day I asked him you know you take some piece of gold and uh, you can break this refractive period but unfortunately she was in absolute, absolute refractive period he took the gold she look at the gold he said what a bad piece you have brought put in her bag <laughs> and he said you're stupid I don't want to talk to you <laughs> so next time be careful your boys <laughs> that when you are trouble with your uh, girlfriend or with your wife wait until she comes out of absolute, absolute refractory period right and don't worry during that she is refractory to everyone in the world <laughs> is that right don't worry at all but once she come out of absolute refractory period then if you do unusual special type of promises like uh, which promises which you are not going to fulfill anyway but you make special promises 
and special, you know, very good talk. And you tell her you are the most beautiful woman in the world. And no one has been born so beautiful and no one will be born in the future. Right? Things like this. With a lot of, you know, effort. You may make her happy again and she start talking to you. Then we say, she was in which phase? Relative refractive period. There are, all these women have learned a lot from these action potentials. Right? It's all about action. So what happens <laughs> that there is absolute refractive period for that wife for 48 hours. After that, for two more days. <laughs> right? If you if he talk to his wife, she will agree. But if he ignore her for four days, after four days she is normal. Or so automatically normal. <laughs> you get it? Yeah, this is how they are. Right, she has come back to her resting emotional state, <laughs> right? So same is true about this neuron, when neuron is having, after just after the depolarization, when neuron are having most of its sodium channels stuck into inactive state, whatever stimulus you bring, regardless of its strength, you cannot produce another action potential or another depolarization. We say neuron, piece of the neuron, that part of the membrane is showing which phenomenon? Phenomenon of absolute refractory period, absolutely resistance, not listening to you, right? Then what happened? Sodium channels come back. They recover. But because potassium channels have produced too much hyperpolarization, potassium channels were ideally supposed to close here. That is, resting membrane potential was how much? Minus 70. 70. So at when membrane has come back to minus 70, right? Resting membrane put, uh, potassium efflux channel, uh, voltage gated potassium channel should close. Only leaky channel should be open. But if the remain membrane permeability to potassium remain excessively high for a short mole duration, excessive potassium goes out and membrane potential try to approach the equilibrium potential of potassium and it become unusually more negatively polarized. For example, rather than minus 70, it becomes minus 80. So we say membrane is hyperpolarized due to excessive potassium loss at the end of action potential. When membrane is hyperpolarized during this time, membrane can be stimulated with very special effort because normally you should take resting up to threshold. But if you want to stimulate here, then you have to take this hyperpolarized membrane first to the resting and then to the threshold. So unusually strong stimuli may produce an action potential, is that right, during this time period. And this time period, during which normal stimulus cannot elicit action potential, but unusually stronger stimuli may produce, right, depolarization. This time period from here to here, what is it called? Relative refractory period. Again, you remember that wife of my friend, she had two days of absolute refractory period and two days of relative refractive period and after some experience, he got an experienced husband, what he was doing, that whenever he want to go somewhere else, he make a fight with his wife. Wife become totally refractory and she is not bothered about him. Right? He knows he should turn back within four days. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> I won't go into detail. Is that right? So, absolute refractive period is due to, because most of the sodium channels are stuck into inactive state. Relative refractive period is because part of a, 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 a membrane for a while is hyperpolarized due to excessive loss of potassium, potassium but unusually strong stimuli uh, can produce action potential. 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 Am I clear? <coughs> now we come to some unusual situations. Well, I have one more friend. You know, his wife was strange. Before even marriage, she was always angry. And after the marriage also, she was always angry. <laughs> Forget about absolute refractive period and, and relative. relative. She was always angry. A very anti-male attitude. And persistently maintained. Whatever he does, he never gets a chance. Why it happens so? Let me explain. Some neurons also go to such situation in excitable cell. Right? Some neurons also or uh, excitable cells may be trapped into such situation that even you appropriately stimulate them, you don't get any action. You don't get any action potential. Right? He used to tell that whatever he does, 
to get some activity from his wife, whatever he does, he never gets anything. It's a very sad story, you should not laugh, right? Sometimes your excitable cells are also stuck into that situation. How it can happen? Let me tell you. Sometimes it happens, let's suppose this is a neuron. Uh, I think it should look like his wife. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I will not mention the name of the lady and the man because they can sue me. But anyway, <laughs> right. What is this with neuron? You stimulate sub-threshold, no response, no action, potential. You, stimul uh, you produce threshold, no action, potential. What a funny thing, at threshold there should be action, no action. You produce supra-threshold stimulus, no action. Why it is there, right? Let me explain it more clearly. Sometimes what happens, okay, I will give you example first and then I will explain the mechanism. For example, this neuron is in a person who's, who is having hyperkalemia, who is having hyperkalemia, it means potassium levels are very high. You already know that if potassium levels are very high, then can potassium easily leak out? No. So resting memory potential will be sufficiently negative? Normally what happens? That when potassium, normally first of all, when potassium leaks out, the potassium leaks out during resting stage enough, it will become suppose minus, suppose 70. It should become normally minus 70. Resting memory potential is minus 70 normally. Now you imagine this person develop hyperkalemia. In extracellular fluid, potassium levels go up, whatever the cause. If there is hyperkalemia, then potassium cannot out, cannot diffuse out enough. So retention of potassium within the neuron, relative retention, will make it less negative. Rather than minus 70, it will become minus 60 all the time. Or minus 62 all the time. And what was threshold? Threshold was minus? 60. Now listen carefully. When membranes are at resting situation, when membranes are at resting situation, then inactivation gate should be open and activation gate should be closed. Is that clear? When you rapidly take resting membrane potential up to threshold, then activation gate open and depolarization occur. Is that clear? Now, if there is hyperkalemia, the resting memory potential will be always near the threshold. threshold. If resting memory potential is all the time near to the threshold, this will permanent, this will close the, what is this? Inactivation gate. This will close the inactivation gate. So what really happens? When an excitable cell are present in hyperkalemic patient, right? The resting memory potential is all the time very, very near to threshold. And when resting memory potential is chronically, for a long time, near the threshold, most of the sodium channel inactivation gate become closed. Most of the sodium channels inactivation gate become closed. And once inactivation gate are closed, why this closure has been produced? Because resting memory potential was not sufficiently negative. It was very near to the threshold. So inactivation gate are closed permanently. Now if you take this to st resting to threshold, even if activation gate open, can depolarization occur? No. So what happened? It is resistant. E this is a case where resting membrane potential is brought to the threshold, but there was no depolarization. Why there was no depolarization? Because Membrane was, membrane potential was chronically for a long time very near to threshold. For an average medical student, his average medical student has a concept that if resting membrane potential is very near to threshold, membrane should be more excitable. But actually membrane become less excitable. You know, it's in life things happen unexpected fashion. So if resting membrane potential is all the time very near the threshold potential or membranes remain all the time partially depolarized, then most of the sodium channel are stuck into inactivation state. And then if you give a stimulus, then resting memory potential go up to threshold, but depolarization will not be precipitated because most of the sodium channels are stuck into inactive. inactive state and they will not be activated. So we say that excitable cell is 
showing the phenomenon of accommodation. What is this phenomenon called? Accommodation. accommodation. It is different than refractory period. Right? Because from refractory period, neuron rapidly recover. But once it is there, the membranes are in a phase of accommodation, they don't rapidly recover. Is that right? Again, listen. When, when in a membrane, all the time, most of the sodium channels are having inactivation gate closed already. Even if you open the activation go, uh, gates at threshold, can you get the depolarizing current? No. So when happens this type of problem, such type of problem which is called phenomenon of accommodation, right? This phenomenon is shown by the excitable cells typically in patients with hyperkalemia. In patients with hyperkalemia, especially they develop very much muscular weakness. They become very weak. Why the muscles become very weak? Because you cannot stimulate the muscles and you cannot uh, produce action potential on the membranes of muscle. Why you cannot do that? Because in patients who have hyperkalemia, in the muscle cell membrane, muscle cells are also excitable cells like neurons. Muscle cell membrane, most of the sodium channels are trapped into inactive state. Is that clear to everyone? So again, just to differentiate, what is the difference in refractory period and from phenomenon of refractoriness and phenomenon of accommodation? When I say neuron is absolutely refractory period, it means that most of the sodium, ch sodium channels were activated a little time before and now they are stuck into inactive state but very soon they will recover. Is that right? In relatively refractory period, what is the cause? Neuronal membrane is hyperpolarized. With unusually strong stimuli, you can produce action potential. Is that right? But in accommodating uh, excitable membranes, what really happens? Resting membrane potential has been chronically near the threshold. So most of the sodium channels are stuck into inactive state. Whatever stimulus you bring, you, there, you may take the resting membrane potential by producing local potential up to threshold. But you will not get the depolarizing current because sodium channels are not ready to be. Activation gate may open, but in activation gate will not open. Am I clear? I think I should be happy, man, if you are really clear about these things. Right. Now, uh, if you have little time, I will explain how neurons talk to each other. Do you want to learn how neurons talk to each other? We have just seen you stimulated one point and Signal is going on the membrane, but of course this neuron will end up. Then signal has to jump from one neuron to the next neuron. Let's see how cells talk to each other because electrical signals which start from one neuron, they have to go through millions of the neurons in the center of a system when you are planning against someone. You know, you are thinking, you agree with someone, you are thinking, I will hit like this, I will kick like this, I will say like this, yell like this. So millions of the neurons are firing, how they are talking to each other, right, let's see. Now, let's take some certain examples how one cell can stimulate another cell, right? As we said that there, there was one neuron, this was sensory neuron, this was the, for example, your finger, and this time what happened? You touch something very hot. What will happen? Lot of sodium will go in? Is that right? And action potential will move over this membrane. Is that right? When action potential will reach at this end, right, there are, this end of the neuron must have in its nerve ending some vesicles loaded with neurotransmitters. It will have some small membrane bound vesicle with some neurotransmitter substance. So what really happens? that when action potential comes to this end, is that right? Due to action potential, these vesicles will come to the, this, new, this uh, membrane bound vesicle will move to the neuronal membrane and fuse with that and there is a release of neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter will move from 
membrane of one neuron to the membrane of the next neuron. In the next neuron, what this neurotransmitter will do? For this neurotransmitter, there are special type of receptors here. Let's suppose this receptor is, this is the neurotransmitter, neurotransmitter bind with this receptor. As soon as neurotransmitter bind with this receptor, receptor channel open. So it means this, uh, there is a channel and this uh, channel is operated by the neurotransmitter. This is neurotransmitter operated channel. So there are many cells which have channels which are operated by neurotransmitters or channels which are operated by hormones or channels which are operated by different substances in the body. Such channels, such ion channels which are operated by different type of specific chemical substances, these are called ligand operated channels. What are those channels? Ligand, ligand operated channels. So neurotransmitter bind as a ligand to this channel and this channel is open. Before the opening of the channel, there were resting membrane potential here minus 90 millivolt. But as soon as it opened, let us suppose this was ligand gated sodium channel. So enough sodium come in, the resting membrane potential goes to threshold. threshold. And then what will happen? Action potential will move over it. It's so simple. So we can say that action potential moving on one neuronal membrane eventually leads to the release of neurotransmitter from first neuron and neurotransmitter moves to the second neuronal membrane and opens the ligand op neurotransmitter operated channels and if there is influx of sodium or influx of calcium the resting membrane potential of that neuron will approach from resting to threshold and then this part will undergo depolarization it will depolarize next part so and so forth action potential will move then from this neuron neurotransmitter will be released that will produce cation loading into next neuron and the next neuron develop action potential. Is it difficult to understand? It's so easy to understand. Is that right? So neurons, here is electrically information is going. From here information jump into chemical form and then here chemical information converted again into electrical signals. So what really happens? First listen, here was what? Touch, touch specific sodium channel. So there was Mechanical energy, me mechanical energy of the stimulus converted into electrochemical energy of action potential resulted into chemical release, neurotransmitter release which produces, it means the jump of uh, signal from first neuron to the next neuron is in chemical form. And then again electrical form energy will go and signal will go forward. So what happens? That information over the membranes of the neuron moves in as electrical signals and from one neuron to the next neuron information or signal move as chemical signals. So electrical signals convert into chemical signals again translate into electrical signals again convert into chemical signals and then they may generate again electrical signals. This is how neurons pass the signals from one cell to the next cell. Is that right? Am I clear? So we can say to produce action potential or produce depolarization main activity main activity should be to take the resting membrane potential up to threshold. threshold. So it means to really produce action potential the real thing is take the resting membrane potential up to threshold. yes threshold. This activity should be achieved by either by mechanical receptors which allow the cations in or by the chemical receptors which allow the again cation in but they are chemically operated or sometimes what happen there is one new cell here, this happens in the heart. Then this is another myocardial cell, then another myocardial cell. You know myocardial cells have electrical windows in between. They are special electrical windows. These electrical windows, these are electrical windows. These are called gap junctions. So what happens, there are many many gap junctions in between the myocardial cells. So if one myocardial cell undergo depolarization, depolarization will spread over this membrane and then sodium will come here and some sodium will trickle through the gap junction to the next cell and take the resting membrane potential of this cell to threshold. Then it will undergo depolarization, then some cations which have come here, they will jump through the gap junction to the next, next cell. So it means that 
how a cell can undergo depolarization it can undergo by mechanical stimulation or by chemical stimulation or by electrical stimulation mechanical stimulation was this chemical stimulation was ligand operated cationic channels electrical stimulation is when one cell which is depolarizing trickles this cations directly into cytosol of the other cell is that clear no problem okay this may be acetylcholine, just acetylcholine binds with the channels which are uh, cation loading channels, cationic channels which allow the sodium influx and calcium influx. We'll talk about these channels in detail when we talk about neuromuscular transmission. Class dismissed. Right, in last video what we discussed, we, were, we discussed about the action potential and we said that action potential is basically depolarization followed by wave of repolarization right and we discussed about that action potential is a way to transmit information from one point to another point within the nervous system and muscular system right now, to, now right now we'll talk about what are the factors which determine the velocity of action potential right let's talk about it the, what are the factors which determine the velocity of action potential let's suppose we make a section of spinal cord here this is sent part of the central nervous system and let's suppose that here is a sensory neuron this is a sensory neuron which has central extension and it is, has peripheral extension last time we were talking about that this is a cell body of a sensory neuron this is its central process and this is its peripheral process. Let's suppose from the spinal cord in this area, this peripheral process is coming to my skin. And the purpose of this point is to take the information from here, when luckily if someone touches here and make, right, then this information of touch should be eventually transferred to the central nervous system. And you know that when stimulus is given and if there is appropriate stimulus, it should stimulate the nerve neuron it should stimulate the neuron and electrochemical changes should be produced in neuron and those electrochemical changes should sweep over the surface and these electrochemical changes are called just please action potential, potential. we have discussed into detail how when someone touches here in the last video when someone touches here how the local potential are produced and then eventually how depolarization and repolarization is produced and how it moves right first of all we'll compare two neurons let's suppose this is one neuron central process and peripheral process suppose this is neuron a uh, this is neuron b central process and peripheral process. The difference in these two neurons is even though both are sensory neuron, both are taking information in this direction, one neuron has axon which is wide and, and other has axon which is thin. So this is a neuron with thick diameter and this is an axon which is thin diameter. This is suppose A and this is B. Do you think which one will take the information fast? The neuron with wide diameter or neurons with narrow diameter. For example, we stimulate both of them simultaneously. And if we have done appropriate stimulus, of, as you know, that action potentials will be produced. Action potentials will sweep on the surface of A and also on the surface of B. The velocity of action potential will be more in the neurons which are with wide diameter or neurons with the narrow diameter. Who will tell me? wide one it's very easy I mean it's just common sense is that right that if if there is wide diameter then the current which is moving it will move with less resistance but when the neurons diameter is less then the current which has to move through that that will be offered more internal resistance and this concept is so easy that it should not be really expa explained that neurons which are having wide diameter right current velocities higher and neurons which are narrow diameter their current velocity is slow now there are some sensations which move slowly to the central nervous system and there are other sensations which move very 
rapidly to the central nervous system. So nature wanted there should be neurons which conduct slowly and there must, must be neurons which conduct very fastly. Is that right? There are some information which move very fastly to your central nervous system. The other information we should move slowly. One way how neuron could enhance, how the nature could increase the velocity was just increasing the size of the neuron diameter. But look, if you really want a very, very fast conduction and you have only one option that you can increase the conduction velocity only by making it wide, maybe this neuron become wider than my arm. Do you think it's a good strategy? It's not a good strategy. So nature has to design some other thing as well. What we discussed right now, the neurons which are having narrow diameter, they conduct slowly. And neurons which have wide diameter, they conduct fastly. So one way which nature could use to increase the velocity of conduction of the action potential was simply by increasing size of the neuron or diameter of the neuron. Is that right? But the thing is that some of the information moved to the central nervous system very, very rapidly. And if nature had only one way to increase the velocity, the only way to by increasing the diameter, maybe some neurons will become more wide than our arm. Of course, that is not a very good anatomical arrangement. So nature devised another way, a very, very clever and ingenious way to increase the velocity of conduction. Is that right? First, I will tell you, you have the concept of myelination. You have a concept of myelination or not? Actually, the second mechanism, the very ingenious mechanism, a very clever mechanism which nature uses to increase the velocity of current, velocity of action potential through the neuron is by myelinating the axons. We'll talk about what is myelination and how it increases velocity. What is myelination and how it increases velocity. First I will talk about a neuron which is not myelinated well. How the action potential passes through that. Let's suppose this is a neuron which is not myelinated and it is going to the central nervous system. It will be slow conductor, fast conductor. The neuron which is not myelinated is slow conductor. This is a slow conductor. How, first I will tell you how current passes through that. Then I will explain that once the myelination is done, what are the changes in the neuron and how velocity picks up, right? What really happens is, as we discussed last time, that every cell has a resting membrane potential of how much? Yes, please. Approximately minus 70 millivolt. Excellent. Is that right? And when we little bit touch it here, or someone touches here, neuron will be, nerve ending will be distorted. And when it is distorted, what really happens? What comes out? Special type of sodium channels open. Just a minute, little Rubian. Like all cells, neurons have, what is this? Sodium potassium? ATPases. ATPases. And these sodium potassium ATPases are always bringing sodium out and concentrating, yes please, potassium, potassium in. So cells become rich in potassium. potassium. This we know already from previous lectures. Plus we know cells have special leaky channel for potassium. potassium. These are the potassium channels which are leaking all the time. These channels are not operated by the voltage. They are not operated by any ligand. They are opening open all the time. Because potassium is well concentrated in the cell, and membrane is leaky to potassium, so little bit of potassium keep on trickling out. And because potassium keep on coming out from every cell all the time, little bit potassium is coming out. So cell is losing positive charges outward. When cell is losing positive charges outward, inside of the membrane become relatively negative. negative because it is losing the positive charges. And this diffusion of potassium outward creates electronegativity in the cell which is called resting membrane potential. Is that right? Now, listen. This neuron is having resting membrane potential comfortably and sleepy and someone little bit touch me here. If someone touch, what will happen? Nerve ending will be distorted. And uh, when it is distorted, these sodium 
mechanically operated sodium channel or we can say these sodium channels are normally closed but when someone touch right neuron membrane is distorted and these sodium channels open so what will happen sodium is more outside inside hurry up outside, outside. so it will trickle inside. in so this sodium trickling which is sodium which is coming in this is due to stimulus when you stimulate it you alter the membrane permeability of the sodium and some sodium channel which are mechanically operated they will allow some sodium to trickle in and when the sodium will come in positive charges are coming in then what will happen Re membrane was having how much electronegativity inside negative. minus 70 when little sodium comes in it will become more negative or less negative less so negative. when it will become less negative it may become minus 60 or it may become minus 50 so it means Membrane which was negatively polarized, when you added the stimulus, some cations come in, positive charges came in, and resting membrane potential be start becoming less negative. Let's suppose when resting membrane potential has fluctuated from minus 70 to minus 50, at this point, when the voltage is minus 50, suddenly, in an explosive fashion, voltage sensitive sodium channels open what opens voltage sensitive sodium. sodium channels so what really happens that as soon as membrane become minus 50 these channels open and lot of sodium comes in and membrane which was minus 50 when lot of sodium come in it become minus 40 minus 30 minus 20 minus 10 zero even maybe plus 10 so membrane which was negatively polarized Previously, membrane was negatively polarized, stimulus brought some cations in, and when stimulus brought some cations in, resting membrane potential went to minus 50, and at minus 50, many voltage sensitive, which voltage sensitive? Minus 50 voltage sensitive sodium channels opened. At this potential at which sodium channels, voltage gated sodium channels open, this potential is called Yes, this potential is called threshold potential. What is this potential? Threshold potential. So by touching here, we took the resting membrane potential up to threshold. And at threshold potential, suddenly a lot of sodium channels open. So sodium channels are, these sodium channels are called voltage-gated sodium channel. Ideally speaking, they should be called threshold voltage sensitive sodium channel because they are sensitive to the which voltage? Threshold voltage. Is that right? When they open, a lot of sodium come in. An electron mem membrane which was negatively polarized by receiving a lot of sodium, uh, it become maybe less negative. And when more and more sodium coming out in, it become less and less negative until it loses its complete negative polarity. Mem membrane is no more negative. So membrane has lost its negative polarity. When membrane has lost its negative polarity, what we say? Negative polarization is lost. So we say membrane is depolarized. What we say membrane is depolarized. But we said last time, as soon as membrane is depolarized, because a lot of sodium has come in, then depolarization sensitive potassium channels open. Another, you know, membrane has many type of channels. These are potassium leaky channels. Don't confuse these channels with these channels. These are what potassium voltage gated channels these were sodium leaky channel don't confuse them with voltage gated sodium channels so, so voltage gated sodium channel produced depolarization of the membrane they brought so much sodium that negative polarity is lost but when depolarization is going on depolarization sensitive voltage sensitive voltage guarded voltage operated potassium channels open normally these channels are closed but as soon as they find the membrane is getting depolarized, they become open. So as soon as depolarization is complete, that enough sodium has come in, and membrane is now, let's suppose, plus 20, suddenly voltage gets it, yes. potassium channel open, a lot of potassium goes out. Now they have closed, voltage gets it, sodium channel after producing depolarization close, and voltage gets it, potassium channel open, because potassium is more into cell, it will go out and potassium will go out as more and more potassium will be lost as more and more potassium will be lost membrane will again start becoming electronegative 
it was plus 10, then it becomes 0, then minus 10, then minus 20, minus 50, minus 70. So what is happening? Membrane is re-establishing its negative polarity by loss of potassium. We say membrane is repolarized. What has happened? Membrane is repolarized. So this was the patch of the membrane which was depolarized and just after the depolarization it went under the process of repolarization. But you have to remember because nerve and muscles are excitable tissue <coughs> What is the definition of excitable tissue? A tissue or cells on proper stimulation you can generate action potentials. Definition of excitable tissue is excitable tissue is any tissue or any cell. When it is appropriately stimulated, waves of depolarization and repolarization run on the surface. The tissues which don't have this property, they are not called excitable tissue. Now you see. Depolarization occur when voltage gets its sodium channel open and repolarization occur when voltage gets its potassium channel open. It means only those tissues can produce depolarization and repolarization and only those neurons can, or those cells can produce depolarization and repolarization which are having voltage gets its sodium channel then voltage gets its potassium channel. Am I right? So every cell does not have voltage gated these channels. So every cell cannot have depolarization and repolarization. This is a characteristic of excitable tissue like nerve and muscle. Is that right? Now, look, someone touch me here. This information should go to the central nervous system and higher to my brain. Information will go as signals of depolarization followed by signals of repolarization. How the current moves? Actually, when a lot of sodium will come in, this sodium which has come in, during the depolarizing event, this will spread on the sides. When this sodium will spread on the side, from the patch 1, it will go to the membrane patch number 2. Now, this is the patch number 2, this is the patch number 3, patch number 4, patch number 5, hypothetically speaking. The sodium which has come inside the patch number 1, during the depolarization, this sodium will move into flanks. When it will go to the patch number 2, here the resting membrane potential was minus 70. 70. As soon as this sodium came into this area, you say this depolarizing current came into this area, this resting membrane potential will move to threshold. Because it was minus 70, when little sodium will come to this area, it will become minus 60 or minus 50. As soon as this area become at threshold, then its sodium channels will open lot of sodium will come in and this area will become yes depolarized as soon as it become depolarized a little sodium will trickle to the next area so next area will move from resting to threshold and then its, it's voltage gated its sodium channels will open and it will be depolarized then from this area a little sodium will move to the next area and take the next area's resting membrane potential up to threshold and then what happened lot of sodium will come in and this will be depolarized and of course, now you can tell what will happen next. The sodium which came in this area, it will move to the next area, next neighboring area, and that area resting membrane potential will shift from resting to threshold, and then sodium will come in. So, what is really happening? Have you seen when you put a flame on the end of a firecracker and flames move on the strip? In the same way, wave of depolarization moves. But actually someone touched me only here. But electrical activity is moving towards the brain. Central nervous system, how? That you just produced a local stimulation. And in this area, you took the resting membrane potential up to threshold by the help of stimulus. But once you have produced threshold in area number one, when area number one undergoes depolarization, it takes the second area to threshold. And then area number two goes to depolarization. And sodium which comes from area number 2, it takes the area number 3 to threshold. And then area number 3 undergoes depolarization and it triggers the next area to threshold. And so on, wave of depolarization really sweeps on the membrane. But you already know, any area which undergoes depolarization, any area which is undergoing sodium influx or depolarization, automatically potassium channels open and repolarization starts. So what really happens when area number 1 undergoes depolarization, 
it triggers the area number two area number two start depolarization but area number one itself undergoes repolarization when area number one triggers the area number two to open its voltage gated sodium channel when this area is producing sodium influx at that very moment in previous area voltage sensitive depolarization sensitive potassium channel open and potassium start going out so it means when it is losing the potassium out it is again becoming more and more electro negative and it is again repolarizing its membrane right back to minus 70 so what really happens it's like this every patch causes a local current which produces depolarization next area and itself this area undergo repolarization now second area undergoes depolarization and trigger the depolarization in third area and itself it undergoes repolarization then third area undergoes depolarization and triggers the depolarization fourth area and itself undergoes repolarization so what is happening in every area first sodium jump in and the point where sodium has jumped in to produce depolarization from the same point lot of potassium come out with a little delay to repolarize the membrane but when any area sodium in flux you see the next area will develop sodium in flux the next area so and so forth so in this way we st someone stimulated only here but wave of depolarization followed by the wave of repolarization is sweeping towards the central nervous system this is how these local currents are moving on the membrane I think paper is also moving uh, these local currents are moving on the membrane to take the information to the central nervous system is that right now during whole this process some sodium will come in you know whenever depolarization occurs sodium comes in and ideally speaking ideally speaking when sodium come in depolarization is produced and ideally speaking repolarization should be done by throwing the sodium out no 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 I'm talking about ideally speaking not really speaking ideally speaking sodium come in and depolarize the membrane and ideally speaking we should kick the sodium out and membrane should go back to its electronegativity that is what is ideal even in neurons world ideal is not there what happens sodium come in depolarizes and it refuses to go out positive ions come in and they refuse to go out then in a very humble fashion potassium moves out for example one for example 10,000 sodium come in then 10,000 potassium will go out when sodium came in membrane become electro positive when potassium goes out membrane again become electro negative is that right now what is the problem here that when action potential wave move on this action potential mean depolarization followed by repolarization for example many action potential someone is stretching me again and again if I'm lucky so don't laugh at me I have my rights as well now listen if someone is stretching me again and again action potential are again and again so what is happening every time action potential moves some sodium comes in and some potassium goes out, out. do you think it's good in the long run no because if all the sodium come in all the potassium go out then further sodium cannot come in and information transfer system will fail right and I said ideal is not there the sodium comes in and refuse to go out someone come to your home as a guest and refuse to go out <laughs> and, and place become so less that some of your own members have to go oh. out this is what depolarization and repolarization far less than ideal situation then what happened you call the cops <laughs> you take the guests and actively throw them out and bring your friends who are very sad why you throw them out or your family members actively bring them back so we have cops here also those cops are sodium potassium 80 pages whatever sodium is coming in during the depolarization they will throw it out by the use of energy they use the ATP you know right now the 25% of all energy in your body is only used by these cops sodium potassium 80 pages sodium potassium pump we use the ATP they use the energy and this sodium which is very stubborn and refuse to go out they kick it out with the use of energy and pull back the potassium with the use of energy is that right am I clear fine thank God sodium potassium ATP these are 
there. Now, look, when action wave of depolarization is sweeping on this neuron, it means every part of the neuron will successively undergo depolarization and then undergo repolarization. Is that right? Now we imagine another situation. We have another neuron. This neuron has a very special arrangement which help it to conduct very fast. Let's suppose we take a cell. Suppose this is a cell and you imagine, I think it's a very low velocity system. Right, now listen, what is happening that if we do some trick, the trick is that, okay, I will first show you how the trick is done. You take a cell, just take a cell and press it out. As you press your uh, shirt, cell membranes become flat and nucleus will go on one side. So if we take a cell, let's suppose, I take a cell and in this cell I press it and its nuclear and most of cytoplasm come on one side. And these two layers of the cell membrane are stripped together. Is that right? Then what I do? I put this cell here, right? Okay. This is the cell. I put the neuron here and rotate the cell around it. You know how I'm talking about? Let's suppose this is the cell. Okay, this is a cell, I press it, and nucleus come on one side. Then what I do? Hold it, please. Here is the neuron, axon. What I do? I put axon here, and rotate this cell like this. What I have made around the neuron? No, paper layers. <laughs> this is something you should know, this is paper. Right, I have just made, I have taken the, what is this, uh, marker, and rotated a paper around it, and this become a paper cover. Right, in the same way, nature is more clever. Nature takes special type of cells which are called Schwann cells. What are they cells? Schwann, Schwann cells. cells. And when, what really happens, Schwann cell come near the axon, and then Schwann cells start rot rotating like the paper. Right? Now there's one Schwann cell doing like this, then another Schwann cell will also rotate, then another Schwann cell will also rotate, then what happens? Please, you have your Schwann cell back. Right. So what really happens, the Schwann cell rotate around it. When Schwann cell will rota rotate around it, what is happening? Multiple layers of cell membranes of Schwann cell. And this is Schwann cell, which has made a cover on it. Is that right? Schwann cell has made and of course here is the nucleus of Schwann cell or here you can show the nucleus of Schwann cell. Is that right? Then another Schwann cell come and it is making rotations and revolutions around it and then now what happens? This is Schwann cell number one, this is Schwann cell number two. Now Schwann cell, when they revolve around it, actually there are multiple layers of the cell membranes. Cell membranes are made of what? Lipids. Cell membranes are made of lipids. It's just like ro rotating a lot of lipid around that area of the axon. Lipids are good conductor of current or bad conductor? They are very bad conductor of current. You know, if this area of the axon from this point up to this point has been rotated with all this cell, do you think from here sodium can go in? Can potassium come out? So do you think you can generate action potentials through this area where Schwann cell has made its personal rotations? So this area becomes insulated from the current activity. The area, what is Schwann cell? You take an axon and around that you rotate a cell many times. And cell is rotated so tightly that multiple re uh, revolutions just make multiple layers of the cell membranes around that. Is that right? Now these cell membranes Right, they are very rich in lipid. Which lipid especially? Uh, sphingomyelin is especially too much in this. Right, sphingomyelin. Anyway, these lipids are in, acting as electrical insulator. They are acting as electrical insulator. So what really happens that from here current cannot go and depolarization cannot occur and repolarization cannot occur. Am I clear? Now, okay, I should make at least three Schwann cells to illustrate my point.
this is the axon inside the Schwann cells. And of course, there's one more Schwann cell which is present over here. Is that right? Now listen. Now Schwann cells have made multiple areas of insulations. Now let's suppose someone touch me here. Now listen care. We have to repeat that story here and see what is the change after myelination. Someone touch me here. Of course that very welcome touch will take the resting manual potential up to threshold and the resting manual potential will move out to minus 50 and at threshold potential a lot of which channels open sodium. voltage gated sodium channels this area undergoes depolarization and of course then what happens same area undergoes repolarization this depolarizing current this depolarization current which will come here can it produce depolarization in this area no, no. but this area from this point up to this point is usually one to two millimeter area not more than that nature has only put from this area to that area is only one to two millimeter a very small area actually whatever sodium has come from this area from area number one the sodium goes in and this travels usually one to three millimeters so it reaches up to here here there are a lot of voltage gated sodium channels concentrated so a lot of sodium will come in and this sodium then again within the axon will move and in next gap between the insulations again there is very high concentration of sodium channels and a lot of sodium so what really happens these gaps which are between the successive Schwann cells revolutions these gaps are called nodes of Ranvier okay this is something you people know I'm really surprised Ranvier yeah, they give surprises. Node of Ranvier. So what are nodes of Ranvier? That in heavily myelinated axons, in between the Schwann cells, myelinations, there are little gap. And those gaps are called nodes of Ranvier. And these points here, the membrane of the axon is exposed to extracellular fluid and it is very, very rich in sodium channels as well as of course voltage gated sodium channels and as well as there are a lot of voltage gated potassium channels here so what really happens and these gaps should not be too long this should be only length should be so much that this should sodium should flow in so what really happens when you stimulate point number one depolarizing current of sodium moves within the axon and next node of Ranvier it takes the resting minimum potential up to threshold and this area depolarizes then this the uh, sodium which comes from first node of Ranvier, this sodium moves within the axon and what happened? All this area from resting membrane potential is moving towards threshold, but no sodium can come from here. As soon as this stimulus sodium moves up to which uh, node of Ranvier? Two. Then resting membrane potential in this area will shift to the threshold. As soon as it shifts, millions of the sodium channels open and depolarization occur in this area. So what really happens? That current is not moving throughout the membrane. It is moving from one node of Ranvier to the next to the next. Is that right? So what will be the effect? That you stimulate one area, right? Sodium currents come in, passes within the axon, right up to the next node of Ranvier, depolarize that, then this depolarization which is on this node of Ranvier, this sodium influx will lead to enough sodium diffusion up to the next node of Ranvier, right? And then resting minimum potential of next node of Ranvier move from resting to threshold and depolarization is culminated here. And then next point of depolarization will be here. You get it? So what is happening? Of course, this is very easy to understand. When this area is depolarized, it depolarizes the next node of Ranvier and itself it undergoes repolarization. When this node of Ranvier undergoes depolarization, it triggers the depolarization in next node of Ranvier and itself it undergoes repolarization. So what is happening? 
the wave of depolarization followed by wave of repolarization which is called action potential, potential is jumping from one node of Ranvier to the next node of Ranvier to next node of Ranvier. So velocity of current will be slow or fast? fast? It will be fast. Is that right? So what is this? This is second clever mechanism used by the nature to increase the velocity of electrochemical information transfer within the exon system. That exon's area go under myelination with nodes of Ranvier, right? Myelinated area is very high resistant insulated area. Node of Ranvier are excitable areas. So what really happens that depolarization or action potential jump from one node of Ranvier to the next node of Ranvier. So it is just like this. Just focus on my foot. In this area, first I will tell you how the action potential moves in upper axon. It is not myelinated. It moves like this. You know, every part of the membrane should undergo depolarization and repolarization. But about this fashion, it is like jumping like this. You can understand it is going to be fast. Is that right? Yeah. This type of current movement and action potential is called saltatory conduction. What is it called? Saltatory. What is the meaning of saltatory? My English is not good. What is the meaning by saltatory? What I feel? Something like jumping. Right? Saltatory conduction. So nature can increase the velocity of action potentials through the axons by two mechanisms. Number one, by increasing the diameter of the axons, making the fibers large size. And number two, by putting the myelinations. Right? Velocity will become very fast. But if neuron is very thin and not myelinated, Velocity may be very low, as low as 0.25 meter per second. And in very large fiber with heavily myelination, velocity may be 100 meter per second. You see, 400 times it is increased. Are there any, some, sens some sensations which go slowly? And there are some sensations which go fastly. Can you tell me which sensations go slowly? Okay, first tell me which you know which one? Slowly means like dull pain. Like yeah, very good. Dull pain moves slowly and fast pain moves fastly. No. No, but this is true. <laughs> she is right. She is saying slow pain moves slowly and fast pain <laughs> moves fastly. She is right. Actually, we have two types of pain. Actually, people have many types of pain in their mind. But as far as skin is concerned or tissue is concerned, there are two types of pain. When you get a cut with knife, you feel a sharp pain. That is also called fast pain. When you feel a cut with knife, there's a sharp pain. After that, a dull pain continues. The sharp pain moves with fast fibers. They're called A delta fibers. And slow pain, the dull pain, moves with C fiber, which are not myelinated well. So you are very right. The pain has two components, fast component and slow component. Sharp pain is fast component, and dull pain is slow component. Fast pain will go through heavily myelinated fibers and of course you are so wise to understand that slow pain should go through unmyelinated C fibers. That's easy to understand, isn't it? There are other sensations also. The fine touch, fine touch moves slowly or fastly? If there's a pin prick, it is fast. You immediately realize someone has pricked a pin. Okay, I will just tell you there are some sensations which are very urgent to go to your brain. Right? like pin prick, that, can, that should go, or some sharp cut, information should go immediately, there's something dangerous, or very fine touch, it goes very fastly. Is that right? For example, when you are doing typing, information of touch go fast or slow? It should go fast, that is fine touch. Is that right? Uh, right, but there are some sensations which should go slowly. Can you tell me a few sensations which nature enjoys to take them slowly? Even neurons enjoy them step by step. No, no saltatory activity. You are young people, you must know which sensation should go slowly. I think Mustafa must be knowing it. Somehow by his face and expression. No, no Sexual sensations. Right? Then what else? Tickling. Someone has ever tickled you? <laughs> when they touch you, when they touch, information goes far. When tickling you keep on, you know, it goes slowly. You are also happy by this, right? <laughs> so which information goes 
slowly, tickling sensation. Itching, thank God, itching also goes slowly, but eventually it goes, right? Itching, sense of itch, sen sense of tickling. S yeah? Sense of uh, sexual sensations. They move slowly to the central nervous system. Nature is not in a hurry to take them, right? And he's talking about temperature. That also moves slowly. Let me tell you something funny. You know, women have some experience that when they're cooking something, if a drop of oil, hot, very hot drop of oil touch, first they feel touch and little after that they feel pain of temperature. Is that true or not? Next time try it yourself, right? So, no, no, no. No, there's a little difference. You feel the touch of oil and then you feel it's very hot, right? Okay, I will give you another example. If inadvertently, in, by chance, wrongly, inadvertently, you open the shower, which is very hot water. First you feel water come and then you jump around. <laughs> it is very, first you are happy, water is there. But before your happiness, really you celebrate, water is very hot and you jump. I don't know in which direction, but you have to go out of that area, right? So temperature goes slowly. The touch of the water is fast. Temperature of the water is perceived with little delay. Is that right? So whole purpose of this lecture up to now was that conduction through the neuron depends on the diameter of the neuron and depends on the myelination of the neurons, right? And of course, another advantage of myelination, you know, nature is very clever. Not only by myelinating system, nature has achieved fast conduction, which has made economy also. What is the economy? In this neuron, which is slow conductor, more areas undergo depolarization and repolarization, more sodium is coming in and more potassium is going out. So these nasty cops have to work more. There's more and more sodium coming in and more potassium going out. So depolarization is going throughout the membrane and repolarization is followed throughout the membrane. So more sodium is lost and more potassium is gained. So sodium potassium ATP pages have to work more. But in this case, do you think all membrane is getting sodium? No. So very little areas in the membrane get sodium. So very few sodium ions come in and very few potassium goes out. So sodium potassium ATP pages have to work here more or less? Less. less. So not only these well myelinated axons are very fast, but they also have economy. That they are more efficient, right? That while their work is getting more and out of velocity is higher, but their, what is that? Sodium potassium ATP work is? Less. less. Is that right? Am I clear? And another advantage. Here, before the sodium and potassium balance is much changed, you can pass less impulses. But here you can pass millions of the impulse action potentials before really there's significant change in sodium concentration inside and potassium concentration outside. Are you understanding? Because there are less ionic changes in this. So this was something about the conduction of, okay, uh, I will make one diagram here. I will make a section. For example, this is your beautiful axon, right? And what is around it? How the myelination occur? What is this? This is your Schwann cell. Is that right? Then of course this will move forward and make multiple revolution. And then of course it become tight and compressed. Right? Because you get it? So first one is myelinated or not? Okay, you tell me which one is, this is number one, okay, make it this number two, this number three, I'll give you one more example. It looks confused. Right, it doesn't have any Schwann cell around it. This is first, second, it is third. Which one is myelinated? Second and third are myelinated. And which one is not myelinated? You are wrong. Third is well myelinated. Second is not myelinated. And first is diseased. Remember, the point which I want to make to you. Schwann cells are also present with unmyelinated axons. Only they don't make rotations. You get me? This is unmyelinated. 
because there's no multiple rotations and this is the point through through which depolarization occur and repolarization occur so unmyelinated neurons are still in association with schwann cells but schwann cells don't make multiple what rotations so they don't deposit much myelin myelin does not mean there's a schwann cell myelin mean there are multiple layers of the membranes of schwann cell there are no multiple layers of membranes of schwann cells so this is unmyelinated this has multiple layers you look at its face multiple layers so it is myelinated is that right this is very sad maybe due to some disease attack its uh, schwann cell has disintegrated this is a demyelinated neuron right can you name any disease which can demyelinate the peripheral nerves oh my god parkinson's disease is in central nervous system you are as far from the answer as much you could be with all your effort yes multiple sclerosis is a demyelinating disease but answer is wrong because that is a demyelinating disease in central nervous system i'm talking about demyelination of peripheral nervous system schwann cells are the cells which provide insulation to the peripheral new axons there are many diseases but at least tell me one of the very classic presented disease guillain barre syndrome spellings are very difficult i write it like this right guillain barre syndrome is that right you really want to know spellings no. that's good but if you <laughs> i appreciate that otherwise i can write it guillain barre syndrome Yeah, Barre syndrome. Is that right? Now you are comfortable. But truly, if you really write its spellings with little bit, with very little errors, I can do it. What is this? Don't call it Guillain Barre syndrome. Double L is silent. So they call it Guillain Barre syndrome. Guillain Barre syndrome is a very dangerous demyelinating disease of the peripheral nervous system. that when auto immune process attacks your schwann cells and destroy the schwann cells and myelin sheets are destroyed and many neurons get demyelinated so person cannot get sensation to his central nervous system this is bad and more bad is that action potential cannot come from central nervous system to the muscles very bad why it is so bad first of all person become paralyzed you have heard of guillain barre syndrome that produces paralysis ascending paralysis the worst part of that syndrome is when it produce demyelination of the nerves which are supplying the worst the part of respiratory muscles many people die where respiratory system is not functional the people who used to have in past very severe guillain barre syndrome they used to die because respiratory system will when resp neurons coming to the respiratory system they will be demyelinated uh, inspiration expiration will stop and person will die these days we are lucky what we do a young man of 22 years old father of just three kids right comes to you with ascending paralysis and he cannot move his legs and arms and every day his paralysis is becoming more severe and then he start difficulties in breathing what you do with him put him on respirator you put him on respirator an artificial respiration will continue for few days until he start fighting with the machine why he will fight with the machine because remyelination has started and when remyelination occur his nervous system try to control the respiration he fight the machine we throw away the machine and he is go back to his action they don't die these days you simply put him on the respirator for many days they remain like this and you keep on giving some positive hope for for his wife and his children their papa will be back and julie comes back is it right there were days when we didn't have respirator we never knew what's happening and uh, in guillain barre syndrome we lose the people <coughs> now you said something about multiple sclerosis multiple sclerosis is another demyelinating disease but that demyelinate the central axons axons present within the central nervous system you know why there are guillain barre syndrome does not attack the central axons and multiple sclerosis attack the central demyelinating system but does not attack the peripheral why simply because the cells which myelinate the peripheral nerves are different and cells which myelinate the 
central axons are different right let me tell you this is a difference between the myelination of peripheral nervous system and central nervous system let me you have a brain suppose yeah <laughs> right and this is a here someone touch on your foot and information is going to your central nervous system this is axon and now from here information is going up is that right this is peripheral axon this is central axon this is myelinated by schwann cells okay uh, i just yeah these are by schwann cells in the central nervous system now there are many suppose there are many axons coming here right so all of them are having their very committed schwann cell these schwann cells are really very very committed the schwann cell which is providing myelination to one axon will never do provide myelination for the any other neighboring axon again one axon may be myelinated by multiple schwann cells and schwann cells which are committed with one axon they will never interact with another axon I mean, true commitment right but look at here what is happening here the multiple axons in central nervous system i will draw them here these are central nervous system axons i don't know i love to teach yes i'm enjoying it you see every especially making straight lines but look at this this is another cell in the central nervous system which is going to do myelination even some cells are promiscuous it is one of those in the central nervous system they feel they are very safe what they do they bring one extension to the cell and then provide myelination around the cell right meanwhile they may provide one extension going to what it reminds you what does it remind you something you don't want to remember i think <laughs> and it has one extension going there you know this one naughty cell giving extension simultaneously providing service to different axons don't think this is economy this is dangerous it is really dangerous you know why because if this cell dies recovery process may be more complex and disturbed as it happened you know someone died and children were not knowing from where they came anyway so what i'm talking about in central nervous system cells which provide myelination are different than the cells which provide myelination to peripheral nervous system the cells which provide myelination in central nervous system are called schwann cells and what are the cells which provide myelination in central nervous system oligo dendrocytes because these are entirely different cells so they have different proteins they have different antigens so when immune system immune headquarter autoimmune disease attack the peripheral schwann cells it will not cross react with central oligodendrocytes so you will get purely peripheral demyelinating disease and if immune system is triggered against the antigens of what is this oligodendrocyte it will not cross react with schwann cells so person will develop central demyelinating diseases the classical peripheral demyelinating disease is guillain-barre syndrome and classical central demyelinating disease is multiple sclerosis which you mentioned multiple sclerosis for a while we just uh, stop our lecture here again i will make another diagram let's suppose here the schwann cell sometimes schwann cells also do the things let me tell you one schwann cell may have providing simultaneously service to multiple axons but not making rotations it is myelination or non myelination non myelination even unmyelinated axons are embedded in the grooves of schwann cells but when we talk about properly fully myelinated axon then there are multiple rotations is that right so when there is true myelination schwann cell is committed to one axon schwann cell is committed to one axon but when the unmyelinated fibers 
then one Schwann cell may be having multiple axons in its neighboring pockets but not properly revolving around NA1. It's a poor service. So none of them gets properly myelinated. Clear? Is that right? Any question up to this? Okay, let's have a break. <laughs>